If you want people to stop the scroll and pay attention to your content, well, you kind of got to give them a good reason to. And how do you do that? You need a catchy scroll stopping headline that instantly tells your audience, hey you, you're going to want to click on this. But there's a fine balance between crafting the kind of headline that entices people to click without having to resort to crappy clickbait tactics. And in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to strike that balance. For more marketing, messaging and copywriting tips to help you stand out online and sell your offers with ease, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when I upload a new video every week. So let's dive into these tips. If you want to write a scroll stopping headline, well, you need to think about what we actually stop scrolling for. What catches our attention in the feed? What actually pulls us in? It's usually one of three things. And the first one is pretty simple. Entertainment. We click on content and titles and headlines that we think are going to be entertaining. That's why if I ever come across a video titled Hilarious Puppy Fails, you better believe I'm going to be clicking on that because that's going to entertain me all day long. <laughs> the second thing that catches our attention is something that sparks curiosity. Something that makes us think, hmm, I wonder what that's all about. But the third is the most important because even if it's entertaining, even if it makes me a little bit curious, if it's not relevant to me, then I'm not going to click. So if you're trying to create content to appeal to a certain type of person, you need to make sure that your headline or your title is incredibly relevant to what they might be interested in or the kind of information that they might be looking for. And a little bonus tip here, in order to know what is going to be relevant for the person that you're trying to attract, you've got to be pretty clear on who that person is and what they'd be interested in. You've got to think about what kind of content would be maybe sort of kind of interesting for them versus what kind of content would make them think, oh my gosh, I've got to check that out. If you need a little bit of help with that, you might want to check out this video here where I talk about how to find your perfect clients and how to start speaking their language. And I'm going to link to that video below. Tip number two when it comes to writing catchy headlines is to prioritize being clear over being clever. And this is a trap that a lot of content creators fall into because it's really easy to think, well, in order for me to stand out, I've got to be funny or quirky or I've got to find a new way of saying this that nobody's ever done before. But if you're trying to attract new people to your audience, AKA people who have never heard of you before and don't know what you do or how you might potentially be able to help them, you need to prioritize being clear over being clever. They need to actually get it, right? They need to understand what it is that you're talking about and how it might be relevant to them. I'm going to use a really silly example here, but I see a lot of people doing this when it comes to settling on the title that they're going to use for themselves in their business. So they'll give themselves a really fancy sounding title, like they're a therapeutic rejuvenation consultant. And you go, oh, so what does that mean? And they go, oh, well, I'm a sleep consultant. I help people to sleep better. I was like, well, why don't you just say that? And the exact same thing applies to your headlines. Don't make people have to think too hard. Don't leave them thinking, oh, like, I wonder what that even means. Because if they're in that scroll mode, they are not going to stick around and try to figure it out. They have already scrolled onto the next thing and you have missed the opportunity to grab their attention and let them know that your content is relevant to them. Tip number three is that you need to know how to position your content as something that your potential clients either want or need. As creatives, it can be really easy to focus on, well, what do I want to share? But you need to make sure that you are focusing your content on what your potential clients would actually want to consume. And you need to keep that at the front of your mind when it comes to crafting that headline. I'll give you a little example here. Let's say that you're a nutrition consultant and you've written an amazing blog on the benefits of apple cider vinegar. And so you give your content the title of the benefits of apple cider vinegar. And I mean, that's great. But does that headline compel people to click? Does that make them think like, hold the phone, drop everything. I've got to find out all the benefits of apple cider vinegar immediately. Mm, probably not. So let's position that same topic as something that people would actually want to click on. The contents of the blog could stay exactly the same, but what if we gave it a headline along the lines of boost your weight loss efforts by drinking this one thing every single day. Now I want to know, right? What is this one thing I can drink to boost my weight loss efforts? So just by changing the headline, that exact same piece of content is going to get way more clicks because now it is speaking to a problem that your potential clients might want help with. But again, this comes back to understanding what your ideal clients actually want. If your people aren't interested in weight loss, they're not going to click because they won't think that that article is relevant to them. So you need to understand what kind of problems your ideal clients want help with. 
And then you use your headline to position your content as a potential solution. Tip number four when it comes to writing a catchy headline is to tackle their immediate objection. Now, humans can be kind of skeptical, right? So anytime you make a claim or a promise in your headline, our brains are going to run that claim through our little filters of really, is that really true? Hmm, would that actually work? And our brain is going to throw up potential objections or potential reasons why it won't. So you could write a headline like how to lose 15 pounds and people in your audience are going to be like, well, yeah, but I bet she's going to tell me I'm going to have to live off kale for the rest of my life. But if you use your headline to actually address that objection, hmm, you're going to spark that little flame of curiosity. And the way that you can do that is by using without statements. And what I mean by that is you can say something like how to get this thing that you want without this thing that you don't want. For example, how to lose 15 pounds without ever setting foot in a gym. So you're using your headline to say, hey, I'm going to show you how to get this outcome. But you're also saying, and I'm going to show you how to get this outcome without having to do this thing that you don't want to do. So before they've even had a chance to think, well, yeah, but I hate going to the gym. You've already said, I'm going to show you how to get this outcome without the gym. So here's a couple of examples of this in action. How to raise an issue with your partner without it spiraling into another argument. How to start a business from home without having to put your kids into daycare. How to write catchy headlines without sounding like crappy clickbait. See what I did there? <laughs> All of those examples tell your potential client, I'm going to teach you how to get this outcome that you want without having to do this thing that you don't want. Another alternative that you can use is an even if statement. An even if statement addresses the immediate excuses that person is about to present to you where they say, oh, I can't do that because of this. So you're going to frame this headline as how to get this outcome you want, even if you're worried that this thing will stop you. For example, how to launch your course, even if you have a tiny list. Can you see how that immediately addresses their objection before they've even had a chance to think it? Because otherwise they would say, oh, look, I'd love to launch a course, but man, my list is so small. But you get in there ahead of time and say, I'm going to show you how to launch your course, even if you have a tiny list. And now you've piqued their curiosity. They'll be thinking, oh, wow, I didn't even think that was possible. And they're going to be clicking on your content to find out how to do it. A couple of other examples could be how to cook family friendly meals even if your kids are fussy eaters. How to create beautiful beachy waves, even if your hair doesn't normally hold curl. How to edit your own videos, even if you normally struggle with tech. All of those examples are saying, I'm going to show you how to get this outcome that you want, even if you think that this is going to stop you. Now, if you were to incorporate just those tips, you are going to see way more clicks and views on your content. But I want to make it even easier for you to craft these really catchy scroll stopping headlines without having to spend hours at your computer wondering what to say. Did you notice? So I've put together a guide with 15 of my absolute favorite formulas to craft killer headlines for your content in literally minutes. You just grab a formula, customize it to suit your business and away you go. Now, some people worry that if they're using formulas, that their content might start sounding like everybody else's. So in this free guide, not only do I give you my favorite formulas, but I actually teach you how to find your own unique, juicy and compelling language to describe what you do so that when you plug it into the formulas, not only do you get way more views and clicks, but your content also sounds uniquely personal to you. So to get your hands on that free guide, just click on the link in the description of this video. Now it's time for you to practice. I want you to comment below and tell me what you do using one of those without or even if statements. For example, I could tell you that I'm going to help you to absolutely nail your marketing message, even if you think you suck at writing copy. Easy, right? So write yours in the comments below. And if you're among the first people to actually go ahead and do that, I'm going to jump in and give you some feedback as to how I think you can make it sound even juicier. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure that you hit that like button to let me know. And if you want to get a little clearer on your ideal client and what is actually going to compel them to click on your headlines, check out the video that's on your screen right now, where I teach you how to actually step into your ideal client's shoes and be able to start speaking their language in your copy. So click on that video now and I'll see you over there. But the th I'm going to sneeze. Oh, it's stuck. <coughs> My dog's like, what the hell was that? <laughs>